after opening the season on the road with four points in six matches against playoff teams a year ago. Well, the Indy 11 are back home to start year number 10 of soccer here in Indianapolis and their seventh campaign on the campus of IUPUI. For the first time, they take on Las Vegas Lights. We thank you for joining us here on ESPN Plus and My Indy TV. We've been with you since day one. Greg Rakestraw and Brad Hodder is so good to be with you. And instead of giving you a big recap of those first two matches for the Indy 11, I want to take as much time in the open of the broadcast as possible, introduce you to so many key new faces that have been acquired during the course of the offseason. Brad, where do we begin? Well, we've been had the luxury of doing this for 10 years. So when you're around the USL Championship that long, you get to know these names. A lot of all-stars, a lot of really terrific players. Let's start with Sebastian Guenzotti because, frankly, we have seen him the longest. He played against the Indy 11 in year number one in his days in the New York Cosmos from 2014 to 2016. Spent the last six years in Tampa Bay, 19 goals in 2019. 21 in 2021. Aiden Quinn is a name we haven't talked much about because Aiden has been in the Western Conference for the last five or six years. Previously has spent time with Lou City and FC Cincinnati. But how about the hometown hero, Cam Lindley, back for his second stint with the Indy 11. Was here in 2020. He was second team all league last year for the switchbacks in Colorado. Yeah, breakout season. You could start to see his genius when he was here in 2020. You know, went off and, and started to mature as a player. And boy, did he have a breakout year last year. And of course, Brad would not be allowed to keep his card in the goalkeepers union. If we didn't mention <laughs> Yannick Ettel, native of Germany, played for Hartford Athletic last year. In his first Indy 11 appearance, he stopped a penalty in a 1-1 draw against Tampa Bay Rowdies. Best way to endear yourself to a fan base is to keep that clean sheet at that point in the game. Great save. He's been great with his feet. He's been great on breakaways, great in the air, and then, of course, on set pieces. A couple of familiar names as well on the opposing side tonight, including Andrew Carlton, former Indy 11 man. He's in the starting 11 for the Las Vegas Lights. Could see Indy native Justin Ingram coming off the bench, who made his rookie debut with the Indy 11 a season ago. Again, first-time opponents in the 11 Las Vegas Lights. It's yours next on My Indy TV, the Indy 11 Television Network, and ESPN Plus. After opening the season on the road with four points in six matches against playoff teams 
a year ago. Well, the Indy 11 are back home to start year number 10 of soccer here in Indianapolis and their seventh campaign on the campus of IUPUI. For the first time, they take on Las Vegas Lights. We thank you for joining us here on ESPN Plus and My Indy TV. We've been with you since day one. Greg Rakestraw and Brad Hodder is so good to be with you. And instead of giving you a big recap of those first two matches for the Indy 11, I want to take as much time in the open of the broadcast as possible, introduce you to so many key new faces that have been acquired during the course of the offseason. Brad, where do we begin? Well, we've been had the luxury of doing this for 10 years. So when you're around the USL Championship that long, you get to know these names. A lot of all-stars, a lot of really terrific players. Let's start with Sebastian Guenzotti because, frankly, we have seen him the longest. He played against the Indy 11 in year number one in his days with the New York Cosmos from 2014 to 2016. Spent the last six years in Tampa Bay, 19 goals in 2019. 21 in 2021. Aiden Quinn is a name we haven't talked much about because Aiden has been in the Western Conference for the last five or six years. Previously has spent time with Loose City and FC Cincinnati. But how about the hometown hero, Cam Lindley, back for his second stint with the Indy 11. He was here in 2020. He was second team all league last year for the switchbacks in Colorado. Yeah, breakout season. You could start to see his genius when he was here in 2020. You know, went off and, and started to mature as a player, and boy, did he have a breakout year last year. And, of course, Brad would not be allowed to keep his card in the goalkeeper's union. If we didn't mention <laughs> Yannick Ettel, native of Germany, played for Hartford Athletic last year. In his first Indy 11 appearance, he stopped a penalty in a 1-1 draw against the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Best way to endear yourself to a fan base is to keep that clean sheet at that point in the game. Great save. He's been great with his feet. He's been great on breakaways, great in the air, and then, of course, on set pieces. A couple of familiar names as well on the opposing side tonight including Andrew Carlton, former Indy 11 man. He's in the starting 11 for the Las Vegas Lights. Could see Indy native Justin Ingram coming off the bench, who made his rookie debut with the Indy 11 a season ago. Again, first-time opponents, Indy 11, Las Vegas Lights. It's yours next on My Indy TV, the Indy 11 television network, and ESPN+. Plus. Trade your current vehicle and get more. Save thousands with 0.9% financing or payments from $249 a month. Drive with two years of complimentary Honda maintenance. To trade, save, and drive, search your local Honda dealer. For over a century, Indiana has been the destination for sports innovation and the state where champions are crowned. Now, we're entering a new era with Sports Tech HQ, a place that inspires innovation and invests in entrepreneurs who are changing the game, one startup at a time. Welcome to the crossroads of sports and technology. Sports Tech HQ, home of the game changers. Meet Zach. Day and night, rain or shine, even just out for a spin, Zach gets around. But we know Zach, and at Indiana Members Credit Union, we know he's been saving up to trade up. IMCU is here to help Zach and you drive your dream. Lock in your rate with pre-approval. It's fast, free, and makes buying the car of your dreams easier. Today, it's all about Zach. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. When your cat's are mean, then your dog is too. And it's hard to know what's fake or true. Just raise a glass with a friend or two. And tell them more, tell them more, tell them more, do. When the online trends keep getting worse And you lost your keys in the metaverse Now your right swipe just went left on you You tell them more, tell them more, tell them more, do It's a crazy world, so what do you do? You tell them more, tell them more, tell them more, do Don't buy a pre-owned Honda unless Honda certified it Drive with confidence knowing your engine, transmission, brakes, and more Honda certified it Plus, get a 7-year, 100,000-mile warranty Covering your Honda certified pre-owned vehicle Only at your local Honda dealer Tonight's match is presented by your Central Indiana Honda dealers. Central Indiana is proud to be Honda's home turf, too. Search your local Honda dealer today. And by Community Health Sports Medicine. Exceptional care, simply delivered. 
Both teams on the pitch getting ready for this one. Again, we'd like to say Chamber of Commerce weather. It's not. Temperatures in the low 40s. It feels like the mid-30s. Our starting lineups presented by your Central Indiana Honda dealers. First four Las Vegas lights. Hato Botello Faz, a player that we saw here a season ago playing for Trevor James of Detroit City. And Jacob Bushu played his college soccer for the Yeagley family down at Indiana University. Yeah, and, and you can't go to sleep on Andrew Carlton. Such a tremendously creative player. He makes things happen. And here is the starting lineup for the Indy 11. It is the same group that was trotted out a week ago in the 1-0 victory at Detroit City. And I understand why Colin Radosov, our referee, was not going to wait for our starting lineups to be done because it's cold out here. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us for Indy 11 Soccer here on My Indy TV. Also, we'll welcome our affiliates across the state of Indiana that are carrying today's match on television. WLMO in Fort Wayne and WHME in South Bend. And of course, every USL Championship match can be streamed via ESPN+. However, you may be watching us on this Saturday night. Thank you for joining us for the first of 17 home matches and the first of 20 broadcasts this year on the Indy 11 Television Network. Jesus Vasquez got to the ball first for the Indy 11. And yes, let us notate the all red kits for the group that we normally refer to as the boys in blue. Indy 11 wore red in their uniforms, foul whistled against Zach Carroll of Las Vegas Lights. We would see red on top of blue in the 2014 season. That's off the referee. Let's start that again, please. We'll have a restart coming here. Indy 11 wore kind of striped like city flag themed in 2015. It's been all white or all blue ever since that time. These kids made their debut against the Rowdies three weeks ago and backed by popular demand and Brad, they look good. Well, when you haven't lost in a uniform, you don't change. I, I'd be surprised if you even wash them. You just keep rolling them out there. So Vasquez will work to build around the back to Adrian Dispay. Our injury report brought to us by our friends at Community Health Network Sports Medicine, the official sports medicine provider for the Indy 11. And just Jonas Fjeldberg not in the lineup tonight. That's important to note because Robbie Dambrot is back in the 18. He suffered a foot injury in a preseason friendly against the Chicago Fire. Good to see Robbie back on the pitch. He was one of the many midseason acquisitions, kind of roster flip 1.0 of two so far for Mark Lowry. And you could see on, on that play there, Budati getting forward, getting into the box. That's exactly what Dambrot brought last year. Now you've got it with both wingbacks. That'll be a foul against Solomon Asante. He was brought in by the Indy 11 early in last season, made his debut in mid-May. Was more of a offense generator than he was a scorer a season ago for the Indy 11. But simply put, they're a better team when he is on the pitch. Yeah, he's playing at the top of the diamond right now, so he's in that role where he can step forward and be a finisher if needed, or he can be a playmaker and sit in there and look to find Martinez or Gonzalez. Did I hear you say diamond? That's one of our keys to the match. They are presented by your central Indiana Honda dealers, the official automotive sponsor of the Indy 11. You can get back to counter press, but explain a little diamond action for us well, here, you, please. You take a look at this. You've got Cam Lindley sitting at the base of it, Asante at the top, Blake and Quinn on the outside. You've got one of the most talented four midfields in USL Championship history. The other part in counter press, how quickly can Indy regain possession when they lose the ball? For Las Vegas, it's the first pass. Indy is a pressing team. That first pass is either going to help Las Vegas break lines and break the press, or it's going to put them in trouble. And then it's all about gambling, risk and reward. When do you open up? When do you send players forward? That, and it's even more important when it's on the road. Las Vegas has to be very calculated as to when they open up. I am here for any and all Kenny Rogers references on the broadcast. <laughs> This is Douglas Martinez, acquired just a couple of weeks ago from Sacramento Republic. Plays the ball across and smothered by Diaz. Diaz, the netbinder tonight for Las Vegas Lights, on loan from, they'll simply put, one of the top soccer clubs from a historical standpoint in this hemisphere, River Plate in Argentina. 
He's allowed three goals in two matches so far, has made three saves, 23 years of age. There's Leo Diaz in between the posts. Jack Blake tried to play that off a Las Vegas player. Believe that was Carlton that took a tumble. And Colin Radosov says that's enough to stop play. No card going to be shown on that, but a restart coming. And then you see Andrew, who last year played for San Diego Loyal. Again, was with the Indy 11 in 2020. Broke through with Atlanta United as a teenager. It's incredible. Did the Georgia native. This is a Las Vegas team that their roster is vastly different from what it was a year ago because they had a working relationship last year with LAFC. That is not the case now. But we see a, a handful of players that we are accustomed to seeing as Budati gets in the way of that entry from Carlton. Asante will do just enough to clear that one off of a Las Vegas player and the the 11 will have a throw in. Tonight's match presented in part by our friends at Select, the official match ball supplier of the USL Championship in many elite leagues throughout Europe. Visit us.select-sport.com for the latest Select product specials and more. Select the player's choice. It's, it's fun to watch Cam Linden. He just sits in that number six spot and then just keeps finding the little seams to relieve pressure off the back line. He is the point guard of this team, is he not? Oh, he certainly is which is, of course, the sport that he played in addition to playing you know, at a national junior level of soccer, was a high school basketball player locally, was Cam. Throw in coming here for the Indy 11. And Cam with the Indy 11 in 2020. He and Andrew Carlton on your screen were teammates. For whatever reason, it just didn't seem to click with Cam when he was here three years ago, but went to San Antonio in 2021, had a really good season was part of just such a fun offense to watch in the switchbacks of right. Colorado Springs last year. And with a new addition to the family, he became a dad for the first time about four weeks ago. But you know what? Let's go home. And Indy was more than happy to welcome him back. Well, you look, you, you talk about um, kind of that breakout year, and you look at, he's, he's a distributor. He's a creator. And you got Haji Berry in front and Galena, and you've got all this talent. Now he's able to put the ball into spaces with guys who can do some damage. Second team all league last year was Camp, playing on the Western Conference. Indy played against the switchbacks last year, lost 4-3 in a match on June 18th. Asante plays it across, and oh. as we'll watch that one go all the way by. Never was a touch there by a Las Vegas player. Goal kick coming here in minute number eight. A great little run. You got Martinez and Guinzati occupying the thoughts of the back four and Diaz. And then you got Aiden Quinn just popping in, seeing if he can get a touch on the ball inside the six. Diaz, again, you come to the States for an opportunity to play on a more regular basis. A little research about him. He had a chance to play against Boca Juniors two years ago. He was the fifth string keeper. And the first four guys came down with COVID-19. That was a somewhat common story. And that year of 2021, this will be his first real extended chance of playing time as professional. Stauffer will send it across, and player goes down in the 18, but not enough in it, says Colin Radisaw. That is a great serve, very, very clever ball. And if you, if you re rewind that to the players making the run in the box, both of them check away from the ball and then make some diagonal angled runs inside the 18 to put them in a dangerous position. That would be El Cubo, Eric Torres, that was the player that went to the ground. And we'll get a look from our pitch side camera. A couple of different camera angles this year that'll get you a look at those 18s. Also, I'd like to welcome you to what goal kick's gonna look like on this pitch tonight. As you watch the screen from right to left, this is an east-west pitch alignment, not north-south. Even though the winds have, have calmed to some degree, it's still 20 miles an hour plus behind the back of Yannick Ettel. So if there's ever a night for a potential crazy goalkeeper goal, this might be one of them going in that direction. 
it because those launches will fly tonight yeah, from you, that end of the park. You take a look at that last ball, too. If the back line is up high, Gwenzadi was teed off on that. And if that ball lands in just that right spot between Diaz and the back line, you can get a touch on it. So Lindley back to organize. Jesus Vasquez brought in midseason last year, part of the loan for Jonas Fjeldberg, when the idea was going to be that Fjeldberg was going to be brought back here this season, which he has been. Vasquez's loan was ended by RGV, and Indy 11 signed him immediately. So you look at this, this is this is new this year. This build, as the two center backs split, Cam Lindley sits between them, and Budati and Rebion go up the wings to try and stretch Las Vegas, and that opens up so many opportunities just to keep the ball and slowly advance it up the field. D's pay was acquired back on March 1st from FC Tulsa. You reference Cam Lindley dropping back almost as a third center back. What was noticeable to me last week in Detroit was how often you would see Edel 25, 30, 35 yards up the park, almost kind of playing a, another center back role to keep that possession going for the Indy 11. Very comfortable with his feet. And when you have a goalkeeper like that, whenever you start to get in a little bit of trouble, you realize, hey, I've got this release all the time. Here's Brian Rabion, his second year with the Indy 11. Brian's been playing here in this country since he joined the LA Galaxy 2 back in 2016. It's just, just this slow build, this slow build. Just keep moving it around, looking for soft spots. Las Vegas has to keep shifting. And Jesus Vasquez and Aiden Quinn not on the same page. And Quinn has been one of the best midfielders in this league for a long time. This is his 10th year of playing in the USL Championship. You see Mark Lowry, his second year in charge of the Indy 11. After very successful stays in both Jacksonville and El Paso Locomotive. And we apparently are uh, down a soccer ball. There we go. Brian Rebion didn't feel like going 20 yards to find one. <laughs> one of that one back from the Suites, if possible. Brian, his first in the 11 goal last week in the 1 0 victory up at Ham Tremec. Vasquez couldn't keep that in play. Throw in coming for Las Vegas. In talking with Coach Lowry about this Las Vegas side, which almost kind of like Memphis a couple of years ago, it was put together kind of late because of some extenuating circumstances. They picked up road draws in their first two matches. This is their third consecutive road match to open the season. Coach Lowry was very impressed by the organization from watching this Las Vegas team on film in their previous two matches this season. Otto Batello Faz trying to force the issue. Yeah, and that, that's exactly what you're talking about with Edel coming up that high and, and Lindley dropping back in. And now if you're Las Vegas, you got to pick and choose. When do we step? When do we chase? It's got to be a bad touch. Maybe it's a ball that turns the defenders back to the field to play. But you got to read those because you just can't spend too much energy bouncing from back to back to back. Well, this is certainly going to be a possession-oriented team this year for the Indy 11. You know, Mark, when he came in last year, basically tried to coach up the guys that he thought was going to be the best system for them to play. But the midway point of the season scrapped that and said, you know what? We're going to go back to what I do. And what I do is the diamond. And that's when guys like Vasquez and Tejada and Dambrot were brought in. All guys back for a second go round. Here's Martinez. He's got Quinn in front of him. Quinn couldn't get there in time. Diaz able to smother it. Unofficially a shot, but good build up and Good payoff on the attack that time by the boys in red yeah. this evening. First time seeing Martinez live. Kid's got some pace. Native of Honduras. First Honduran to play for the Indy 11 since 2015. Had five goals last year. Playing for Sacramento Republic. This, this portion of the match brought to us by Keystone Construction. Keystone Construction. It's more than construction. We build a vision. Foul whistle against the Indy 11. And Carlton goes to the turf. What's he now, 22 years old? 23 at this 23 point. 23 years old. Seventh year as a pro? Eighth. Unreal. You are correct, sir, 22. I tried to age the man incorrectly. 
He had it right the first time. It's a nice ball. Service to Carroll, who plays it back in. Aiden Quinn able to settle. And Carroll, one of the more familiar faces on this Las Vegas Lights team to us in the Eastern Conference. He spent the last couple of seasons playing for Memphis 901, where he played for Ben Pierman, who now has moved on to be the head coach of the Charleston Battery. High line kept by the Indy 11. Yeah, tough, tough opportunity there. You've got Solomon Asante and Guenzotti both making a misread there. The defender takes the ball, splits him, and creates that opportunity for Las Vegas. Asante fouled. Solomon over 50 goals, over 40 assists in his years spent playing in the USL Championship. Spent three and a half wonderful years with Phoenix Rising. And that Indy will see for the first time this year. Same with the Oakland Roots and Sacramento Republic. Those are the four current USL championship teams that Indy has never faced. And that goes away this year. The schedule math is very easy this year. 24 teams in the league, 12 in both the Eastern and Western conferences. Play everybody from your conference twice, home and away. And then you split home and away games with the teams from the other conference. First time since Indy's days at the end of the North American Soccer League where you would see everybody in the league. Asante. That's Revion by his lonesome left side if he can get it to him, but instead he draws the foul. And now again with that wind, as Botello Fa is the player that committed the foul. Your chances maybe are, are a little more, you're able to go on goal with that wind behind you here from this distance. There's a, there's a ball that I really like. It's dangerous for a keeper. It's a ball that's just sort of driven, sort of lofted, that's going to land right between the 6 and the 12, that you just look to send a player in there just to get a little flick on. And for all the new names and faces, a name that we haven't mentioned yet, and shame on us for doing that, it's Jack Blake that is standing over this one. The of Nottingham, England. We saw him play for both Minnesota United and Jacksonville Armada. Spent time with Real Monarchs and San Diego Loyal as of late. Looking for Rebion. Carroll got there first. And Vasquez got there late. Yeah. The shoulder nudge and the foul that was accurately called there against the Indy 11. By the way, this portion of this match is brought to us by our friends at Community Health Sports Medicine. Exceptional care simply delivered. And that was an easy call to make. Good job to get inside position. And that is players that are from the States but have been spending time playing overseas. Jimenez is from Miami but spent the last four years playing professionally in Colombia. Lindley steps up and sends that ball sideways for a Las Vegas likes throw in. Botello Fa is trying to carve out some space and Quinn will volley this one towards downtown Indianapolis. You know, we haven't seen it much in our, our first nine seasons. A, a natural ball winner on that back line. Dispey is winning everything that's being served in. We saw Adrian play for Tulsa last year. Got 30 matches for the artist really known as the Roughnecks. But in talking with Mark Lowry about Dispey the last couple of weeks, you know, he goes, he's going to win everything in the air. And, and at 6-3 and 6-4, they feel they have unearthed a, a couple of hidden gems in Dees, Pay, and Martinez, guys, that were acquired either right before the season started or right after the season got underway. I remember you and I having a conversation with Mark in mid-February after a preseason friendly that we were able to stream against Indiana Wesleyan. And Mark said, there's two players I need, two positions. Yep. I need more depth at the back. That's Dees, Pay. I need a big fell up front just to mess some things up. And that's that guy right there in Douglas Martinez on your screen. Martinez is a bit more of a known commodity at this stage of his career than Dees Pay. Dees Pay is the first native of Cuba to play for the Indy 11. In fact, if our math has been added up correctly, there are now 41 different nations that have suited up for a match in Indy 11 history, dating back to year one in 2014. That's going to be a foul against the Indy 11. 
Jack Blake, the guilty party. Nothing card worthy just yet, but been more than a few whistles to stop play at this juncture. And that, that's one too that, you know, Blake is arguing that there was no contact. Today's match presented in part by Sports Tech HQ. Indiana winning is in our DNA. For more information, visit ForTheWinners.com. You've looked at the last two. You've had Andrew Carlton serving from almost this exact spot. Been very, very dangerous on these. Budati got there first. And referencing nationalities of players for the Indy 11. Eunice born in Belgium. Represents Morocco from an international standpoint. Dangerous ball here, back post. Budati did just enough. Carlton trying to clean it up. Carlton plays it across. Oh. Revion was there. The first real moment of danger against the Indy 11 so far that is squelched by the foul drawn by Sebastian Guenzotti. And a card is shown for the first time. And this to a young man that we haven't had a chance to talk much about. The Indiana University product, Jacob Bushu, called for the foul. I can tell he's a Midwesterner. He's not wearing sleeves. It's <laughs> in the upper 30s right yep. now. Jacob has spent the last six years playing in Finland after spending his first two years as a pro playing for St. Louis FC. Young man from the Champaign-Urbana area, so I'm sure he's got some friends and family here watching him play tonight. You look at that last opportunity from Las Vegas. Had a little bit of a breakdown here on this side to give some room for a serve, but it was the backside. We were a little bit late with Budati making his run, and then you found Carlton on the backside all alone. You've got to be really careful with that traffic on the backside. Martinez goes to the turf. And he will switch sides of the attack. Revion. Great ball. Excellent find. Here's Blake. You get some possession, you get some touches on one side of the field, see how many players you can shift over, and then you either look in combination to get to the weak side, or you look to go direct like Rebion just did. Mr. Reminder fans, every Saturday is Soccer Saturday on 93.5 and 107.5, the fan. This week on the show, head coach Mark Lowry, Brian Dunseth, BYB president Catherine Reed, and some other guy. All on the show this past week, go to Anchor. Dot FM slash Indy dash 11 1075 thefancom to go back and listen to any of your favorite episodes. The other guy was you, by the what? way, in case you had forgotten. You were on the show this week. Greg Rakestraw, Brad Hodder with you. Just like the Indy 11, we're in year number 10 as well of bringing these matches on my Indy TV 23. Oh, Gwenzani sneaks it through. Gwenzani! He was on side. There was a touch there by the keeper. Diaz is going to require little attention, but it will be a corner kick coming. Gwenzotti five goals a season ago for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. It was just a fraction of an inch from opening his account with the Indy 11. Terrific ball through to find him. Great touch. Thought it actually was a little heavy and got away from him, but he was able to catch up. I thought Diaz might be able to pounce on that one after that, that touch from Gwenzotti. And there wasn't contact there. I think that was Diaz that just took kind of a wrong step, which is why the backup keeper is starting to get loose for the Las Vegas Lights. That was a non-contact injury, which oftentimes can be the scariest ones. Whenever we do resume play, Diaz is going to try to stay on as we speak. It's Cam Lindy. You see the profile shot of him. He'll be the gentleman that will take most of these when given the opportunity this year. Of course, for so many years, that was the domain of Ioze. He was on the bench as an assistant coach now for the Indy 11. Lindley plays it low. Right back to Cam Lindley. Now looking back, the ball. Post and off the bar. 
When Zani a touch or two, keeps it alive. And it pinballs off a Las Vegas Lights player. There was a brief ask for a potential handball there in the box. We didn't get a good look at it. The action was so fast and furious. Throw in coming for the Indy 11. Very similar to the restart that they scored on in Detroit. A ball slid on the ground through the box. This time it was played back to Lindley, and a whole bunch of danger came on the other end of it. And the wind at this juncture is not the factor that it was a week ago in Detroit, but still tough to accurately gauge exactly where that ball is going to go on those long airborne crosses tonight. What a find. Can an Indian player get there in time? No, Martinez took the risk that Budati could get there, and he really could not. Mark Lowry likes the speed of thought and the idea. Goal kick coming for Diaz in Las Vegas. Yeah, you, you take a look at some of the, the problems that Indy can create for teams. You got Martinez and Guanzati sitting tight inside the, the, the 18 in those scenarios. And then you got Budati and Rebion coming up outside wide and just waiting for a ball like that driven at an angle through that they can find the other end of. This portion of this match is brought to us by your Central Indiana Honda dealer. Central Indiana is proud to be Honda's home turf too. Search your local on dealer today. And this one steered towards the White River. It's not a good thing for those of you watching outside of Indianapolis, by the way. Take away, though, by Las Vegas in midfield. Number streaming forward. Great win back by Budati. Eunice played 61 matches over the last two seasons for Hartford Athletic. Spent time playing at both Boston College as well as Creighton during his collegiate days. Quinn, Rebillon. Now Stopper with the throw in. Possession tilted in favor of the Indy 11, which is not surprising. And Stoffer, whistle given. Not sure if that was on Asante or Blake, but either way, it will be a restart coming for the visitors from Nevada. Fans, you can show your Indy 11 pride and get your exclusive IMCU Indy 11 debit card at any IMCU branch or online today at IMCU.com. Watch this ball here. Stauffer tries to cut it back. Wins out with him step for step. Does work its way through, but then this will be launched across campus. Go, 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 go. 27 minutes in, your impressions of this one so far, Brad. I like it. I like the pace. Last, I tell you, the connectivity, you talked about it. The connectivity of Las Vegas is impressive considering how late the team was assembled. Carlton, right idea, just couldn't slot it past Dee's pay. And then Lindley, fouled by his former teammate in Carlton. Could hear Quinn yelling, go, 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 when Las Vegas passed the ball back to Diaz on that last possession. That's one of the visual cues that Coach Lowry says he wants his players picking up on. When that ball goes back to the keeper, we want to step and press every one of those. Aiden Quinn has quite the family story. And I would imagine that you probably crossed paths with his dad, Brian, who was an indoor soccer legend playing for the San Diego San Soccer. Yes. I did not know that. Holy That smokes. is his father, yes. So even though Aiden played his college soccer in the Midwest at Bradley and Akron, respectively, he grew up in Southern California. We'll finish that story when time allows. Martinez in pursuit. That one carried over the touchline. It'll be a throw in coming for the Indy 11. So yes, Aiden's dad, Brian, is from Ireland, is a naturalized U.S. citizen. Began his professional days playing for Everton. Never appeared in a match with the first team in the then first division back in the late 70s, early 80s. But then like so many soccer families 
of the early days of pro soccer in this country. Dad came over to play in the NASL at some point in time. That's the Quinn family story. Winzati is on side. Martinez takes a tumble. Here's the aforementioned Quinn looking back post, but Diaz had that covered the entire way. Yes, Aiden's dad, Brian, had 40-plus caps playing for the U.S. men's national team in the early 90s. It was one of the last players cut before the 1994 World Cup, where he could have been teammates with the original coach of the Indy 11, Jurgen Sommer. He played on both the 94 and 98 World Cup teams. The way the synopsis, I think they're synopsis, in your brain fire those are, is those incredible. Are, those are synapses. Synapses? Yeah, synopsis is a recap of something, which I just kind of did, <laughs> of, of the Quinn family life story. The synapsis firing is you what allows incredible. that to happen. I'm just glad things are working. It's cold out here right now. Asante tries to chip this forward to Martinez and couldn't track him down. Fans, you can take the boys in blue with you wherever you go. Download the all-new Indy 11 app in the Apple Store or get it on Google Play. This is the first of at least five home matches this month for the Indy 11. And a reminder that they will be home on Wednesday night for U.S. Open Cup play against the Michigan Stars, the champions of NISA from a season ago. NISA, one of the three leagues that plays at the third division of American soccer. That is a 7 o'clock match start time. No stream for that match. Want to watch that one? you got to be here on Wednesday night. Let me look into advance to the... Next round of Open Cup play for the first time since 2019. And that stat is not as damning as it might seem because there was no Open Cup in 2020 or 2021. They were beaten by St. Louis City's MLS Next Pro Squad here a year ago. Dee's pay range is over. Not only wins it back, but keeps it in play and maintains the possession. Oh, a tough ball. Not the one you wanted to play that time. Here's Stauffer. Stauffer, I thought he would have a hit from distance there for a moment. Now Tyler Bagley, great hustle to track that down. Could not sneak it by, and it's deemed to be a goal kick coming for the Indy 11. Yeah, sometimes you get so comfortable with possession in the back that you realize you've got numbers that sometimes you just you don't check that review mirror sometimes and play a ball like that that becomes a little bit dangerous. It's a great ball right there. You bring that ball into Quinn's feet, it collapses two Las Vegas players on him, and then they're able to break out of it. I was just saying. Martinez. Couldn't find a teammate that time, but again, the clearance. A bit shanked that time by the visitors. Carlton works his way around Blake. If Las Vegas can counter. He's pay hustling back. Edel had it covered the entire way. Yeah, he, was, he was already around the 12 by the time that ball was struck. Edel, a native of Germany. The 13th different goalkeeper playing a match for the Indy 11. We saw four of them take the field last year, a new club record. Edel, like the first goalkeeper in club history. Native of Germany. That being, of course, Christian Neek. Revion foul. And a restart coming here for the Indy 11. Bagley on your screen for Las Vegas. Young man that played in the Ivy League at Cornell. Played last year with Inter Miami 2 in MLS Next Pro. And this is really kind of the first year that now we are kind of adding those team names to places we've seen players play over the years. El Cubo, Eric Torres looking to get that ball back. Carlton making the run. Play to the side, throw in coming, and that was Vasquez that acted as an effective last line of defense for the Indy 11. Well, Andrew Carlton is causing all sorts of problems in transition. There has never been a question about the talent of Andrew Carlton. Soffer on the throw in. Headed back post, and had it covered the entire way. That was Botello Faz that 
got ahead to it. Telefa is one of three key departures from Detroit City at the conclusion of last season, really four. With our buddy Carl Wimet, now playing back in Canada for Atletico Ottawa. But Antoine Opono now playing for Hartford Athletic and Declan Wynn exiting Detroit City after last season as well. Another hustle assist for Opono today. I thought that his signing by Detroit may have been the best free agent signing of last year because of what he meant for that group that was largely constructed of guys that had made the move up from, right. from Nisa. Right. There were a couple of key pieces of Harp Athletic squad from last year now play for the Indy 11. Adding Opano is a huge boon for them. Tonight's match presented in part by McGowan Insurance. They're a proud partner of the Indy 11. Visit McGowan, I-N-S-G-R-P.com for all of your insurance needs. And Asante is fast. It's been a heavily whistled opening half. Indy is playing, with, even though Asante is on the turf, Indy is playing on. Just one card shown so far. That one to Bushu. Rebion. Good ball. Beautiful touch. Winning Gonzati. Couldn't maintain the possession. Once again, Indy will reset. What changes, if any, might we see in half number two from Mark Lowry's side? I, I think you're going to be pretty happy with what you've seen. You'd like a little bit more connectivity in transition. You've had some opportunities where you've had numbers when you've won the ball, and you've just played the ball either to the back foot or a little bit too far out in front. Speaking of happy what you're seeing, as I take a look at the South Grandstands opposite our camera locations, a largely full Brickyard Battalion, it is a very hearty crowd that is out here tonight. Diaz had the real estate located perfectly at the edge of the 18. But again, for those of you watching from outside of Indianapolis, the weather can best be described as rugged tonight. It is not exactly a pleasant evening, but there's a really good crowd on hand. Yes, if it was a better weather night, there'd be more folks in the building, but I want to thank the hearty souls that have ventured out tonight. We hope for better weather seven days from now. Right, we hope for better weather on Wednesday night. Carlton again sends it in, but a little bit too much on that one. As neither Bagley nor El Cubo and Eric Torres could track that one down. We saw Torres last year playing for Orange County. A veteran of both Liga MX as well as Major League Soccer. A proven goal scorer. Tonight's match brought to us apart by Hyatt Place and Hyatt House, downtown Indianapolis. Experience comfort in downtown Indy. This will roll all the way through. Martinez gives chase. Blake able to maintain possession. Ball sent in. Wenzati. And that'll eventually be a foul. And there was an ask for a potential handball. Thought he may have kind of winged that one to keep it in play. And he's from the Las Vegas bench. Yeah, look at how Las Vegas has adjusted to the possession across the back line of Indy. They're sitting, they're waiting. They're just waiting for one touch that they think they can get a foot to. And that's when they're stepping and pressing. Cedro Sanchez, you got a quick look at he on the bench for Las Vegas Lights. He was the interim coach at the end of the 2018 season. There have been some very notable names that have coached this team in their six-year existence. Eric Winalda, current LAFC head coach Steve Chirundolo, Frankie Yallop have all taken a turn as a head coach in Las Vegas. Botello Faz with the push in the back. This Las Vegas team has never made the playoffs in their five previous incarnations. Last year, the closest they came Finishing ninth in the Western Conference. This year, the top eight will make the postseason. Last year is the top seven 
in both conferences. Bagley knew he was offside, couldn't touch it. Indy has given up just one goal from the run of play. So far through 340 minutes of soccer. Then again, they've only scored one goal from the run of play as well. And the penalty at the last to pull a point in St. Petersburg three weeks ago. Revion strike on the set piece to do all the scoring in Detroit City seven days previous. And this is where Indy can't get impatient. Las Vegas is just hanging around waiting for a missed touch. Oh my goodness. And you can start to see they got five bodies that start to squeeze the ball when they recognize that Indy's in a bit of trouble. Blake, Asante, Lindley, now Quinn. Revion to his left. He's got Martinez and Guenzada looking to make a run. Good job by Bagley to get in the way. And now Vasquez will make the clean defensive play. Quick look at Colorado Soft, just shook his head, say no. As Vitello Faz went to the turf. It's one of the fascinating ways that, that teams adjust. You take a look at how they were handling this early on, and it was sort of sitting back and just studying it, and now it's a little bit more calculated. You can hear from the coach, and you hear from the players. They're starting to recognize when to start squeezing the ball in this possession, and Indy cannot get impatient here and try and force a ball because Las Vegas is so dangerous in transition. A pair of draws on the road so far, so they have produced results in this early stage of the season. Have the lights. Quinn. Sizing up his options. Dees Pay steps up to help. At the edge of the 18, not enough in it. Good job by Lindley. Lindley couldn't blast it through. Of course, this match brought to us by Keystone Construction. It's more than construction. We build a vision. Asante had a brief vision from well outside of the 18. But no traffic meant no problem for Diaz. And he's able to make the play. Yeah, I mean, you, you like a shooter's mindset of saying, hey, I got a little bit of space. I'm in the attacking third. I'm going to pull the trigger. But, you know, 30, 35 yards out, you've got, you, you've got good opportunity. You've got players all around you. You can keep a little bit more possession, make the lights defend a little bit longer. In basketball, we would say in the gym range. That's kind of Solomon. Yes. He's in uniform. He's in the park. Let, let it fire. And, and the part about it, too, you know, I, I hate to be critical in moments like that because we've seen him score goals like that. All deflected off of Ali Boutati on the far sideline. Martinez able to track it down. Revion advancing forward. Couldn't cut it across Stauffer. Yeah, it was kind of between two thoughts in that moment. And Edel, again wisely. So he was inside of the 18 and snared that one. Yeah, look at that last ball that came into Revion. He was looking, do I touch it down the line to Guanzati? Do I look at either Asante or Martinez in the middle? Kind of got caught between two thoughts and the defender closed him down. Don't think we're looking at a great amount of stoppage time at the end of this one. There have been a lot of whistles, but we have one injury, no substitutions, obviously no goals at this juncture. I would assume that both teams would happily take a little warmth for the next 15 minutes inside of the locker room. Nice touch by Botello Faz, but Lindley there to read the play. Carlton does enough to draw the foul on Asante. There's a chance to nick one at the end if you're the Las Vegas Lights. You 
Yeah, this, this is one of those moments see, that, that defines games. You're in the, the dying seconds of this first half. You gotta be locked in. Here's a ball right now. You can't let this ball slip that good. Cam's coming out. Everybody's gotta be dialed in. You and I have this pitch side perch here where we often see things almost simultaneously as the players do. Both of you and I got a point at his Cam Lindley. <laughs> Put it ahead that direction. Bagley sends it Great in. serve. Could be a problem. Well, by far the most threatening moment of this match just belonged to Las Vegas. Edel slowing it up. What a ball. I believe that's Botello Faz that has taken a moment as well. What a ball served in. First heart and throat moment for the Indy 11. As Budati did not get the clearance he wanted to on it. Batola Faz feels he should have had his second of the campaign. While we were showing you that, one minute of added time, just one. So as expected, not much there. Martinez took a wallop. That time on the uh, clearance attempt by Jordan Ayambila. So it will be a throw in coming for Las Vegas, but Martinez just needs a minute. He'll be okay. And that's it. Well, a very evenly played first half, while possession has been controlled by the Indy 11. Frankly, the most threatening moment just happened, and it was for the opposing team in the Las Vegas Lights. Quick thoughts in the opening 45. Well, you're happy. I think towards the end, Las Vegas started to, to pounce a little bit on the possession in the back third from Indy. Indy was getting impatient, either taking too many touches and putting themselves into some problems, or forcing a ball up the field that got Las Vegas out in transition. Got to stay away from that. Stay tuned. Coming up at halftime, we'll have a look around the USL Championship scores from this fourth weekend of league play. Highlights and more from across the United Soccer League platform as well. And if time allows, we'll catch up with the head coach in Mark Lowry. Nil-nil through 45 here at Carroll Stadium as you're watching Indy 11 Soccer on My Indy TV, ESPN Plus, and the Indy 11 Television Network. When your cat's a meme and your dog is too. And it's hard to know what's fake or true. Just raise a glass with a friend or two. You tell them more, tell them more, tell them more, do. When the online trends keep getting worse. And you lost your keys in the metaverse. Now your right swipe just went left on you. You tell them more, tell them more, tell them more, do. It's a crazy world, so what do you do? It's very true that it takes a village to raise a child. And when it comes to my healthcare village at Community Health Network, it's all nestled right in my phone. Accessing healthcare is the ability to be connected with your provider and ask a question when you need it. I feel like when I'm meeting with a community nurse practitioner or doctor, they're tuned in to what is going on with me and the way that they can serve me best. Indiana, winning is in our DNA. And we're winning the future with 22 billion in new business investment, building an economy of the future with unprecedented momentum. Indiana, for the winners.
Brickyard Battalion back in mid-season form. It's only 50 minutes. They will sit the entire match in the 11 Las Vegas lights, nil-nil through the opening 45. Greg Rakes, Rob Brad Hunter with you here on ESPN Plus, my Indy TV. And Welcome to our television affiliates in both South Bend and Fort Wayne for the first time as well. We know that guy, Jordan Farr, member of the Indy 11 for three seasons. He's had the save of the week, three weeks running. Unreal. He's the player of the week, and obviously it has worked out so well for him in San Antonio. Yeah, you, you love the fact that you can have your goalkeeper awarded save of the week three weeks in a row, but then you also got to look at your defense and say, hey, what's going on down there that we keep putting him in that position? His mustache is questionable. His skills <laughs> are not, and congratulations, Jordan, he too, a first-time father in recent weeks and months. Brian Remion, the Indy 11 representative on the team of the week this week for the USL Championship. Now, elsewhere around the USL Championship, take a look at the current table in the Eastern Conference. Most important thing I can tell you is this from the Indy 11 perspective, they have a match in hand on everybody on this chart. And Tulsa played last night a late 2-2 draw against El Paso Locomotive. Indy's that got three games in hand on FC Tulsa. Again, folks, it is very early in the season. There's 31 to go after tonight. Yeah, but you love seeing yourself in that playoff spot, having played only two matches and having so many in hand on everybody else in the table. Again, 12 on each conference, top eight in each conference make the postseason. So 16 of 24 will play additional soccer by the time that we get to late October. Upcoming schedule around the USL Championship and for the Indy 11 as well. Here are some of the late games that take place later this season. In case you want to get your West Coast soccer fix. Much like the Indy 11 are playing a first-time opponent in Las Vegas tonight, they will do the same when they play host to the Oakland Roots next Saturday night, 7 o'clock. Again, ESPN Plus and the USL will be on ESPN 2 when Lou City and Miami square off. Former Lou City man Paco Craig leading Miami FC against Josh Winder and those so many talented players from the boys in purple across the Ohio River. Again, Lou City, Miami catching on ESPN 2 on Saturday, May 13th. More halftime show comes your way in a matter of moments. be honest most of us aren't going to be professional athletes but if your goal is to finish your degree we can help come to a university that puts your goals first Bellevue University your partner in finishing goals going to be professional athletes but if your goal is to finish your degree we can help come to a university that puts your goals first Bellevue University your partner in finishing goals Trade your current vehicle and get more. Save thousands on all new CRVs with 3.9% financing or $329 a month. Drive with two years of complimentary Honda maintenance. To trade, save, and drive, search your local Honda dealer. Meet Chip. 30 years ago, he started a small business with a big idea. Today, there's a new building, a new fleet of equipment, and a new era of leadership. But we know Chip. 
And at Indiana Members Credit Union, we know he plans to keep growing, building business with the next generation. IMCU is here to help with secure and simple account management tools and commercial financing to grow business. Today, it's all about CHIP. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. a pre-owned Honda unless Honda certified it. Drive with confidence knowing your engine, transmission, brakes, and more. Honda certified it. Plus, you get a seven-year, 100,000-mile warranty covering your Honda certified pre-owned vehicle. Only at your local Honda dealer. I was threatened with violence. We didn't show the Frisbee dogs at halftime. <laughs> I want to make good the Indy 11 fans that could not be here who demanded the Frisbee dogs. They've been tremendous. So are you for watching us. Greg Rakestraw, Brad Hunter with you on My Indy TV, ESPN Plus, and the Indy 11 Television Network. Again, scoreless here in Indianapolis. Let's update you on some scores from elsewhere across the USL Championship. Again, there were some earlier matinees, and as mentioned, there was a game that was played last night as well between El Paso and FC Tulsa. That one finished in terms of a 2-2 draw. There was a couple of afternoon matchups today as well. Hartford and Orange County played to a 1-1 draw. Detroit was supposed to play at 4 o'clock today. That got moved back because, well, the weather conditions were kind of like they were up there last week. Nearly unplayable. That game has gotten in the way. RGV has a 1-0 lead up in Hamtramck. Colorado Springs played in Loudoun today and got a 1-0 victory as well. And Miami FC with a one-goal advantage over Memphis 9-0-1. Again, those are matches that are currently in progress elsewhere around the USL Championship. Time now for some news and notes across the league as well. And as referenced, it is Open Cup time. The Indy 11 will play the Michigan Stars coming up on Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. You'll have to be here to watch that match. We hope to see you there when uh, Indy tries to move on to round number three of the Open Cup. El Paso Locomotive. How about the clean sheet and an assist for Benny Diaz? And Fidel Barajas becomes the youngest scorer for Charleston Battery. And much as we think this Indy 11 team will have a renaissance this year, Brad, expect the same thing for Charleston because Ben Pierman has become a proven commodity in terms of winning at this level. It's unreal. I mean, you make they, they made roster changes, um, but that's the most significant change, and it's an immediate change in what the battery did last year. That was the team that you kind of went to to go get three points last year. Indy right. did it twice. They scored four goals in each game against Charleston last year. Playing the battery will be a completely different deal in 2023. Yeah, he, he's got something going on. I mean, when he came in to Memphis, it was an immediate difference there. He's now with Charleston, immediate difference there. You know, if, if you're a, a battery fan, you're thinking, how long can we keep the guy? The Frisbee Dogs have kept us entertained at halftime. We hope Brad and I were somewhere close in the neighborhood of keeping you entertained watching this broadcast. Stay tuned. Second half action comes your way in a matter of moments as you're watching Indy 11 soccer on My Indy TV, ESPN Plus, and the Indy 11 Television Network. When you're cats and me, then your dog is too. And it's hard to know what's fake or true. Just raise a glass with a friend or two. You tell them more, tell them more, tell them more, do. It's a crazy world, so what do you do? You tell them more, tell them more, tell them more, do. Meet Kate. She has a lot to juggle. Family, work, it can lead to trying days and tired nights. But we know Kate, and at Indiana Members Credit Union, we know at some point her space at a premium life may change. IMCU is here to help Kate and you find your space. Now add on a remodel with an introductory rate of 3.9% APR on a home equity line of credit. Today, it's all about Kate. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. The main part of my job is definitely listening. People deserve transparency. I don't want the financial part to be something that stops or hinders a patient from having the health care that they need. I try to treat each person like 
there my mom or my grandmother, my daughter, my husband. I want them to know that they are not just another phone call for us. And it's very rewarding to know that I can provide peace of mind. We are back as the boys in red tonight are getting ready for half number two. So is the head coach of the Indy 11 and Mark Lowry. And Mark joins us now. Mark, overall, your impressions on what you saw from your team in the opening 45 minutes. Yeah, it's, um, I expect that. They're a really organized 4-4-2, and I saw that in the videos coming into the game. It's tough to break down. I think we've had a lot of the ball, 78% of the ball, which is incredible. Um, Got to keep being patient, though. We can't, we can't get anxious. We can't get frustrated. This is football. It's going to be a game mentally now. If we need to stay switched on, we'll win 1-0. If we lose focus and get frustrated, we'll lose 1-0. That's football. They're a good team. They're, they're organized. Good luck keeping that Thank focus. You. We'll talk to you after the match. Mark Lowry, kind enough to join us here at halftime. And your thoughts on what Mark had to say. Yeah, I agree. You take a look at it, too, and the possession has been fantastic. Las Vegas is starting to kind of figure it out a little bit, how they want to press, when they want to press. The one thing I'd love to see a little bit different is quicker decisions once you do get Las Vegas unbalanced. So here we go. In the 11, switches in. Again, the wind at the backs of Las Vegas lights, but that wind has been tampened down by the chilled evening air at this point. Edel. Couldn't play that with his hands as he was wide of the 18-yard box. No changes for either side. You heard Mark in the brief snippet that we had with him. Talked about the organization of Las Vegas Lights. He talked about it before the game. He's talked about it now during the game. They've done a good job of just kind of rolling with the punches. Even if their chances have been few and far between, their last chance was phenomenal. He's already eked out a 1-0 victory on the road this season. Looking to potentially do it again here at home. Good find. Martinez, Asante, and now Jesus Vasquez. Vasquez looking to go with the sleeveless look as well. Even though he is from San Luis Obispo, California. And before he played for the Indy 11, he played for RGV and LA Galaxy too. So believe me, he's not had much experience playing in climbs such as this tonight. Long distance ball that Edel will simply watch trickle across the byline for an Indy 11 goal kick. First of four home Saturday night matches here in the month of April for the Indy 11. And Oakland Roots is next Saturday night, 7 o'clock. In Indianapolis, that match will be seen on Wish TV. It'll be the home of four of our television matches. The remainder, such as tonight, on my Indy TV 23. Blake with the run going. Blake keeps the pressure alive. Trying to carve out some space, plays it across. And Actually steered out of the six by Las Vegas Lights. Blake sends it in again. Asante couldn't get to it. Quinn will settle. And Revion will track it down. Revion the cutback. Clever move. Bagley blows a tire. Asante tries to line it up. Stoffer got in the way. Martinez sets a good screen for Blake. Blake lines it up, has a hit, but then a defender plows into Diaz. That frankly kept the attack alive probably longer than it could have been or should have been for the Indy Lim because Diaz had it cleanly. 
And the center back didn't realize where he was. Early on that, on that first ball to Solomon Asante, I would have loved to have seen a shot on that. I think he took an extra touch to give himself a better look and lost the opportunity. He's paid. Good step that time by Andrew Carlton. For a guy that's six, what is it, six three? He has got pace. Tonight's game presented in part by Sports Tech HQ. Indiana winning is in our DNA. For more information, visit ForTheWinners.com. If you're Indy, how do you break this down, Brad? Well, you've seen a couple of, of opportunities here where they've played it out wide and made quick decisions. Moving it through the middle, get it out wide, make a quick decision. When you get too many touches, those, those lanes close down. Martinez, the touch. Budati finds him. Great sliding tackle. Who touched it last? Las Vegas did. Second corner of the match coming for the Indy 11. Ball took a final touch that time. Off of Alejandro Mitrano. Martinez has got such pace. He's going to cause all kinds of problems. Five goals last year playing for Sacramento Republic. This is Quinn that will play this in. We saw Lindley with the in swinger with the right foot at the other end. Aiden will take it with the left. Sends it in and getting ahead to it first that time was Jimenez. Botello Faz. Hustling back to just pick up the pace for D's pay a little bit. This portion of this match brought to us by your Central Indiana Honda dealers. Central Indiana is proud to be Honda's home turf, too. Search your local Honda dealer today. Just happened to have the reason to drive right by the factory in Greensburg on a couple of occasions last week. D's pay. Since Carlton scrambling for a moment. When Zotti the target. But Stauffer wins the foot race and will watch that one trickle across the touch line for a Las Vegas throw it. Do you like that? You just you, you get a little bit of possession, you're moving the ball across the back line, you're waiting for a pocket to open up. Drive that ball into that pocket, and you're just looking for Gwenzadi, Martinez, Rebion, Budati, just to find the other end of it. Some contact there, but not enough in it, says the referee. We play on. That's the benefit of the Indy 11. Martinez slides it through for Budati. Budati at the edge of the six. And Martinez craftily carves out some space for a throw in for the Indy 11. Martinez, the last man signed by the Indy 11 this season. I joined the team in time for the opener. Started and played 80 minutes in his Indy 11 debut last Saturday. Asante. Clever touch. What a touch. Budati. It's a turn off a Las Vegas defender. Asante took your advice the one time from a possession ago. Just couldn't get that one lined up. I think it caught him just a little bit off, a little bit by surprise. It hits the ground, bounces up, sits right up for him, and he just wasn't ready to get his body over the ball. And if you're into, you're liking the feel of this second half. Chances starting to populate a little bit more now for the Indy 11 here in half number two. Torres. And Lindley didn't want to take a chance with Edel. They swept it sideways. Hey. 
to the edge of the six. Asante draws a foul. That sent flying. And you're kind of holding your breath after the halftime talk from Coach Lowry where he says it's just it's a one focus. If we can stay focused and, and wait for an opportunity, it's one nothing for us. If we don't, we're going to drop this one one nothing. And you were just hoping that that little miscue in the back wasn't one of those things that leads to a goal. Martinez fouled. Mitrano, the guilty party. Mitrano turns 25 in three days. A man from Venezuela. He's played in Slovakia, Uruguay, his home country. This is the first year he has played here in the United States. What's your play here, coach? I think you bend that ball in. You look at, uh, you got Martinez right around the 12. You've got Diaz Pay on the backside. Just drive that ball right over the line. Diaz let it, got a hand to it. Now he will launch, and Edel awaits. And just sends it to Cam Lindley. There's such a valuable asset to have a goalkeeper that's comfortable with his feet. Trouble. Carlton plays it across. Vasquez got in the way. The trouble quickly ended by the Indy 11. Now Lindley with acres of space. Finds Asante. Asante trying to find Guinzotti. Diaz steps to the four and blasts that one away. There's Martinez. Quinn. A little contact both directions. We play on. Carlton. The ball stayed in play. He thought it was going to clear it off of Budati and just the twists and turns favor the Indy. 11. Thanks to our new sponsor in Mom Water. You heard of Mom Water, Brad? Yes, I have. It's refreshing. Fruit infused vodka water with zero carbonation, zero sugar, zero carbs, and only 90 calories. Mom Water is the perfect game day drink. Found in Indiana and now a proud sponsor of the Indy 11. Please drink and enjoy responsibly. There is that it factor that some players have no matter what sport it is where they just always seem to be around the action when it's electric time and and carlton every time in transition he the ball seems to find it good no call advantage play martinez racing towards goal Turns back towards the 18, and there's too many bodies to fight through. Will be a throw-in coming here for Las Vegas. Well, you like how that developed. Martinez, first game of the States to play in 2017 with New York Red Bulls, too. There exclusively since 2019. Got a handful of matches with Real Salt Lake and Major League Soccer. Martinez is a teammate of Jack Blake's with Real Monarchs, so those two know each other pretty well. Martinez the flick, the giving go between he and Asante. And swept back towards the owner's suite to our right. Quick restart by the Indy 11, foul against Martinez. And the first sub of the game, he's not to the fourth official just yet. 
But a player that we know well is the local product, Justin Ingram. Never get a chance to line up against his team from a season ago. I am below the player that down in a heap. And this is well the third match for Las Vegas Lights, much like the Indy 11. He has content to the players fly up the park. Budati will watch this one trickle across the touchline. Blake's clearance didn't get past Carlton. But the ball, ball found Martinez. Asante quickly dispossessed. Martinez wants the long distance oh. ball, but Asante's distribution was a bit off. They were on the same page in the thought. The ball was just misstruck. Restart coming here for Las Vegas. No wave on of Ingram just yet. Now it comes. So we will have our first substitution. And it's Ingram that will come on to replace Tyler Bagley. And all of our substitutions brought to us by Jiffy Lube of Indiana. And it's very fitting that Jiffy Lube of Indiana sponsors the substitution and the first substitution is a young man that graduated from Pike High School and played for the Indy 11 last year. Justin in his rookie season played in 30 matches for the Indy 11 last year. Spent time at both the University of Virginia and Loyola of Maryland in his collegiate days and good to see him getting the opportunity here tonight. Asante trying to weave his way around Stauffer. You can't do it. I like the sub for a couple reasons. Not just for the, the energy and the fight that he always brings to every ball, but there's something special about playing in your hometown. You know you got some people in the stands, a little bit of extra spark every time you take a touch. And let's bet he wanted to be back here th this year. Let's not lie about it. He's got a little motivation in tonight's match. <laughs> Revy on will. Knocked the ball sideways, and seemingly the forward momentum is going to come to a halt here for the Indy 11. Tonight's match presented in part by Community Health Sports Medicine. Exceptional care simply delivered. Take a look at the, uh, the number of chances that Indy's created through Budati and Martinez, and, and they've been dangerous. And the nice part about that is you got Guinzotti then on the back side. If you can break it down, slide a ball across, you've got one of the most natural goal scorers in championship history on the other end of it. You're finding such success. Keep, keep going to it. And Ridley will drift back between the two center backs and now Vasquez will charge forward. Wenzati couldn't keep it for long. Wenzati named the team captain before the season began. And an Edel to the edge of the 18. Yeah, the tough part on that last ball, you, you played some possession on the left side, then you find Wenzati's feet, but you brought all the players for the lights over there. So he's, he's jammed up with bodies all around him. He's pay. Blocked by Carlton. Four substitutions remain for Las Vegas lights. All five available for the Indy 11. Both teams rest the full 18 tonight. Quinn. Finds Aiden yet again. Here it is. You got acres of space over here with Budati and Martinez. Can you get it here before you have the shift from the lights? Oh, 
Blake. Martinez. And Lindley just couldn't get there in time. Dee's pay has been as good as advertised tonight. I'm, I'm so impressed. Whistle finally given as Asante was writhing in pain in front of the Indy 11 bench. Bit of a late whistle, but Asante will now be attended to. And, and I agree with the late whistle. He knew that it was a foul. He was just waiting to see if Indy could do something with it and play advantage or whether he was going to make the call. And when Indy lost possession of the ball, he whistled that. I thought that was well officiated. So restart coming as Asante is not 100%, but is up and ambulatory. This reminder, fans, that Indy 11 Premium Suites are the perfect way to entertain your guests. Learn more at Indy11.com or call 317-685-1100. This is also the part where I point out that all suites have working heat in them. <laughs> so we're going to come in April. Suites might be the way to go. Good decision. Dees pay. Oh. Renzati a touch. Steered away by, from the keeper by the defender. It will be a corner coming for the Indy 11. And you get the feeling this game's going to run into one moment just like yep. that. One little yep. pocket of space. And that's Dee's pay picking up the ball in the middle of the field and having the presence of mind to have a look downfield just to see if he could find a seam to find Guanzati's feet. Well, it's Lindley. And we'll take this one. He's got Blake and Quinn at the edge of the 18. Dee's pay, one of the targets inside of the 18, didn't get to him. Blake coming up in support, keeps it in play. Couple of touches here. Vasquez couldn't control it. And now seemingly out of danger. Trouble. Swinging it left side. Dees pay. He's been the fixer of trouble I, for the Indy 11. I, I got to tell you, I would not have brought that ball down. That was one. You got two players around you. You're out of shape as a team. Clear it up the field, but. Great confidence, great touch to collect it. And I referenced again the conversation the three of us, as in you, myself, and Mark Lowry, had in mid February. And he said, We need more depth at, 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 at the center back position. You go ahead and get Dee's pay. So a couple of weeks ago, as I have Mark on soccer Saturday, I said, Hey, did you expect Adrian to play this much? Because again, you're like, Hey, we need a little more depth. And he's like, I guess, make no mistake about it. When we saw that he was available, he immediately became a starter for us. And clearly he has played like that since joining this team a month ago. Got to get it to Badani quicker. Badani. And he steered in, no, but does he own a corner? Yes. Iambula thought that perhaps that was last touch by Budati. Well, you look at the times that Indy 11 has the ball on the left side of the field. Budati's got his heels on the touchline over here, and they've just either not seen him or not able to get it to him before the lights shift. This is Quinn that will send it in. All the way across. Vasquez got tied up. Didn't really make a play on it. Ayambula does a good job of kind of shielding Lindley away from it. To have a conversation about it after the fact, but no whistle necessary in either direction on that one. There is Stoffer. Stoffer, a young man that might have some friends and family in attendance. He is from Owensboro, Kentucky. There's Martinez. Martinez, the chip. Just couldn't find a way through. And back to Edel. Edel. There's no Las Vegas player within 30 yards of him. Blake. Works his way around Carlton. Tonight's game presented in part by Johnson Controls. Johnson Controls. The power behind your mission. Love it. Oh. But the turf monster got to Budati and... 
if that didn't you, you got to collect that before it hits the hits the turf and he's used to playing on turf but dylan stadium that's what they play on up in hartford as well with our battalion in full song at this point we were interviewing Eunice for soccer Saturday a few months ago. We were having a debate as to how many languages he spoke, somewhere between three and five. Who was, is, who was debating, you and he? Which was, yes, between which was, you know, between two and four more than I speak. Opportunity here for the lights. Around Dispay. Ball played across. Wow. And that is a goal kick coming. So how do you do in a debate with somebody it when really he knows debate. how many languages right. he speaks? In other words, it word got to me that he had spoke, he was either spoke four or five, and he said, no, it's either three or four. I forget the exact number at this point. It was less of a debate, more of a general discussion. That's how I'd reference yeah, it. See, I wouldn't have used the word debate. You want to bust on me for synopsis, synapsis, I'm going to say debate versus conversation. Now we're even. Trust me, we're not. Dees Pay plays it up to Budati. And Carlton and got there and takes a tumble. And we'll, before we restart, we'll make sure that Andrew Carlton is okay. Carlton had three shots on target in the first two matches for the lights. As he and Budati collided. This is the only time that these teams will see each other. Some of the other games against Western Conference competition early in the year for Indy. They'll head out to Orange County on April the 15th. Oakland Roots coming into town next week. Carlton will slowly make his way to the sideline, so temporarily the lights will play a man down. He'll get waved back in momentarily, and that moment is right now. So 20-plus minutes, and again, we're not looking a great amount of stoppage time the way this has been conducted so far. There frankly, have not been a lot of shots on goal between either side tonight. Possession has been in favor of the Indy 11. Frank, the more dangerous chances of belong to the visitors from Las Vegas. This has all the makings of either nil-nil or one-nil at this point. And back to Martinez. This fortunate match brought to us by Keystone Construction. At Keystone, it's more than construction. We build a vision. Oh, Martinez on an island. Bugatti making a run. Plays with the middle. Ship back towards Martinez. Martinez didn't get much on it, but defender couldn't take a chance for Diaz to pounce on that one. Another trip to the corner flag coming. I think this is corner number five taken by the Indy 11 in this match. This was one I thought Diaz might have had a chance to cut that angle even more. No substitutions have been used yet by the Indy 11. Got a full complement lined up where Cam Lindley is going to send this one in. Lindley Good delivers. Ball. ball got to Dees Pay. And the 11 player down, we play on through it. Throw in coming here for the Indy 11. A player down with Solomon Asante, who has spent a good chunk of the night's match on the home turf. Good little switch. Budati tucks inside, opens up some space for Martinez. He pops out wide. The envelope clears it. Botello Faz advances a bit forward. Good touch by Lindley. 
and Dispay will play it to where Vasquez has to give chase. Tonight's match presented in part by the Denny Companies. Tearing down the past so you can build the future. out wide and possession across the back. These little fishing trips. You just throw a little bait out, see where you can get Las Vegas to bite, and then see if you can't move that ball into the open areas. When Zadi never get the ball to his boots. Budati. Blake goes down. We play on. Quinn. Tries to cut it back. Had Guenzotti making the run. Could be trouble. Yeah, 3v3 at the back. Ingram held up. And then a foul called against Quinn. And from the any perspective, is that the worst thing in the world? Yeah, I'll take that foul because it allows you to get your defensive shape again. Another Las Vegas substitution. Starting to make his way towards the fourth official. Court Preston will be asked to enter the fray. Patello Fa has got a head to it, but again, never get it to his boots. Carlton weaving through traffic. Great tackle. He's pay. Now Blake out of there with it. Martinez with Asante and Wenzani to his left. Budati providing a supporting run. But well done to defend that one by Bushu in Las Vegas. Then Lindley will be shown a card. So first Indy 11 yellow goes against Cam Lindley. Just the second yellow of the match, one against each side. Now Rick Torres is done for the night. Tremendously defended from the lights. I thought Martinez might have had the early serve in behind the back line to Guenzadi on the back post. Otto Botello Faz getting a bit of a chance to recalibrate on the turf. Or to talk to Preston. On the restart, Edel races off his line and gets there quickly. In the fight for the loose ball, D's pay. I mean, Vinny Burnley kind of took a hand to the face in that dust up. While we were watching that, again, our position is right by the team benches. You may have heard some of the clamor from the Las Vegas bench. That wasn't towards the fourth official. I think that was towards their own team in terms of potentially getting another sub simultaneously with the one for Torres. This is a kind of glance back. Great job by our cameras to catch that. Pay has to go to the shine lines for just a matter of moments. We wave back on momentarily. Fans are reminded to watch Wish TV, your local news source. Find them online at wishtv.com. I believe it is Harrison Robledo that will be the player brought on for the Indy 11. Just a bad touch. Lindley slides it forward for Blake. Blake plays it across. 
Budati follows up, and Budati yep. is fouled. So now, Lindley wanted to get the quick restart. It won't happen. And then Lindley shown a, a, a card at drawn on Iambola. Smart, smart play. You're in a dangerous spot. So if you don't take a quick restart, you got a great opportunity to build something here. But if you can catch them while they're out of shape, smart, smart play. So it was Budati that drew the foul. It led to the restart here at the edge of the 18. And that goes against Carlton. And then in the subsequent attempt to try to catch Las Vegas napping a little bit. He may have been kind of the third man in that time was the player who ended up getting the card shown his direction. Anyway, it is Robledo that is standing by the fourth official. It won't be waved onto this match just yet. You, know, you can have a hit from here. I'd even like to see uh, Solo take a couple steps back, see if he can pull Carlton out, and if not, you got a little bit more space for the ball to be played in. It's Quinn, couldn't clear the wall. Oh, Asante what a looks to make the turn. But yet again, well defended by Las Vegas. And now they can try to launch a counter. Carlton weaving through traffic. And Remy on. Yep. Jersey tugging a card. Yep. Uh, you, you can see. You can see the, the way that Andrew Carlton feels the game. He knows the guy's on his back. He knows when they're about to take a big step, and he just slides that ball between their legs and just is able to keep that counterattack moving. So both teams now with a pair of yellows shown tonight. Robledo is in for Jack Blake. All of our substitutions brought to us by Chippy Lube of Indiana. And Vila will exit. So the Lago will enter now for Las Vegas. First year pro who played at three different Division I schools. The two former Indy 11 men standing over this one in Carlton and Ingram. It will be Carlton that will go for goal and go for naught. Of course, this match is brought to us by your Central Indiana Honda dealers. Central Indiana is proud to be Honda's home turf, too. Search your local Honda dealer today. Budati takes a tumble. Carlton involved in the dust-up. Robbie Dambrot is getting loose for the Indy 11. He'll be making his season debut sooner rather than later. Here's that ball. You just got to bend it behind that back line. You got to beat your man to the ball. Lindley sends it in. Goes all the way through and nothing comes of it. And the restart coming for Las Vegas. Don't miss a minute of the action in 2023. Whether your club is on the road or at home, catch every second of USL Championship action on ESPN+. Plus. Home to the USL, La Liga, Bundesliga, UFC, and more. Update at plus.espn.com.
This one has been a stalemate from the start. Budati. Takes that ball around Pato Botello Faz. There's Robledo, young man that's on loan from FC Cincinnati. By far the youngest member of those Indy 11 players that's on a professional deal. He turned 21 in February. Spent time with both FC Cincinnati and New York City FC in his days for coming to Indy. Quinn has a hit from distance and the short hopper Diaz handles well. Well, Robbie Danbrot's about to make his way to the fourth official. Robbie acquired from the Pittsburgh Riverhounds last July. Made an immediate impact with this team. He is a starter at the outside back position when healthy. As Lindley takes a tumble. Carlton involved yet again and immediately Andrew reaches over and taps his old teammate on the hip and says, my fault. So our next substitution brought to us by Jeep of Indiana. We'll see in Brian Olevion exit so Robbie Dambrot can join the festivities. Yeah, and you look at what Dambrot, you talk about him coming midseason last year, brought an immediate spark. Energy started attacking out of the left a whole lot more. And when you look at how this game has opened up on the flanks, now you've got another set of fresh legs, able to get forward and put a little bit more pressure on the lights back line. Ambrot listed as a back, but he is much more of an attack-minded player. Guenzotti flicks it forward for Budati. Well done on the tackle. Corner coming. It was Matrano that able to save that one. Give another corner for the Indy 11. Yeah, that was a great find from Guenzotti into Budati. Once again, it's Lindley that will take it. The end of this match is nearing. I'm not sure there's much extra time going to be added on to it. Ball goes all the way through. Vasquez will maintain the possession. Quinn steers it back in. Lindley couldn't work it around Botello Fa. Carlton around Robledo. It's, it's unbelievable. He just has got a different sense. Advantage being played. Indy has five red shirts back. The hit from distance and nothing comes of it. An absolutely unbelievable hustle from Dispay to come in and provide cover on the back. He was, he was inside looking for a ball on that corner kick and then had to make an 80-yard sprint to make sure that the integrity of Indy 11's back line was intact. I know there is a man of the match poll that we'll have on Indy 11's Twitter account. That's going to be a foul, I believe, against Budati. But in my estimation, Dees Pay has been the man of the match for I, the Indy 11. I agree with you. By the way, this match presented in part by... Community Health Network, exceptional care, simply delivered. Well, these are those, those critical moments in the game. You know, there's, there's not enough time to make a mistake and recover from it. Everybody's got to be dialed in. Focus has got to be locked in. Good turn. Budati able to maintain the pace. Cuts it back for Gwenzati. When Zotti, looking back post, couldn't sneak it through. The bicycle, not on target. Well, of course, this is the only action this weekend for the Indy 11 men's senior team. We want to make sure we wish the best of luck to both the U19 and U15 boys teams that will play for their respective age division championships in the USL Academy Cup Finals tomorrow.
You can watch the U19 Boys and Girls Elite Finals on the USL's YouTube channel. More information, visit usl-academy.com. Mark Lowry, how are you feeling about tonight if it ends in a nil-nil draw? Hey, you're undefeated. You pulled another point. You're not, you're not disappointed. I think, you know, you've had chances to collect all three. You've also had chances for Las Vegas to get all three. So, fair result. But can you pull it out right now? Is there, is there one more great opportunity left in this match? Indy scored one of the 95th or 96th minute to get a point in Tampa Bay three weeks ago. I don't think this match is getting to a 95th or a 96 minute. No one coming for the Indy 11. I think you're looking at three minutes at this point, perhaps of out of time. So the sands of the hourglass are starting to fly through a little bit. Robledo. Asante. Oh. Well read by Vegas. And that was probably a little unnecessary in terms of getting that ball so quickly from the Vegas perspective. You look at that ball, too. It's coming into Solo's feet. He checked his shoulder. Vegas just steps in front. Give away here. Opportunity here. Offside flag is up. I think that's the first offside flag of the game. It's, it's been that compact in terms of how the match has been played tonight. And no argument from Paolo Botello Faz. As you say, the fourth official puts up four minutes of additional time. And, you know, it's interesting how matches, you know, change by the week. Because last week, Detroit, numerous offside violations. Cam Lindley going to be done for the night early. Juan Tejada will come on to replace him. So Lindley hustles off. Tejada provides a bit of fresh legs and maybe one more body going forward for the Indy 11. Juan has now kind of taken on the super sub role for the Indy 11. He was acquired for Nikki Law, kind of the first of the moves that was made to flip the roster last July after spending four years with the Tampa Bay Rowdies. And you never get cheated with effort when he's on the field. Good read by Quinn. Finds Asante. Asante plays it across. You got to have it. And that was Tejada. First moment of the match for Tejada and couldn't latch on to it. Great ball by Solomon Asante. We'll get a great look at it from the field perspective here. Look at this serve. No chance for Diaz to get it. Is there one more moment like it in the match? Dees Pay goes all the way back to Yannick Edel. At some point for Vegas, one point becomes a really good result when you're this far away from home. The three consecutive road draws to start their campaign. Chance of fight, Indy fight from the Brickyard Battalion. Budati. Robledo, beautiful turn, oh, maintains possession when Zadi couldn't head it home. Two good looks for the Indy 11. Throw in coming here for Las Vegas. There was not a touch there from a Las Vegas player. Some cracks starting to show in the Vegas defense. And the fact they have been chasing this game for 90 plus minutes. Vasquez. Time for one more build up here if you're Indy. Asante. Wenzati. Touch, good turn. Wenzati flicks it forward, but Diaz read it. Vasquez was the player that was closest to it. Well, the best chances for the Indy 11 have come in the added time in the last three minutes. And 
This would be the first clean sheet for the Las Vegas Lights this year. The first time that Indy would not have dented the scoring column in a match this year. To the dying seconds now. The final embers of this one. Martinez could not get there in time. Trouble. Otello Faz races back. Vasquez had him covered. Hang on, there might be one more in this. Now as much as we watch the action, the ball, we watch Alan Radosov to Lance at the wristwatch, see exactly how much time is left in this one. Tahata able to maintain possession. It's off of Carlton. The restart's got to be quick here for Indy. Manzotti couldn't find his teammate, and that's it. The points are shared tonight. The organization of Las Vegas Lights was clearly evident as Indy could not find a breakthrough moment tonight. Indy 11 are undefeated through three, but they could not pull all three points in front of the home fans this evening. League play now resumes in seven days, but the next match for the Indy 11 is in four days as the U.S. Open Cup is on Wednesday night against the Michigan Sun. But the final score from Carroll Stadium this evening is Las Vegas Lights nil and the Indy 11 nil. When you look at what you saw in the last five minutes there, and, and you can start to see some of the things that that Indy 11 is capable of doing. But you also look at one goal conceded in three matches, and you're thrilled with what you're seeing out of your back line. Time now for our stat of the game. It is brought to us by Sports Tech HQ. And our stat of the game is the second clean sheet by Yannick Ettel. So again, just one goal allowed in 270 minutes played so far for the Indy 11 this season. But again, they couldn't dent the scoreboard either. So with that, it is a nil-nil draw for the Indy 11 this evening. Stay tuned, we'll have some player interviews for our post-game show that comes your way in a matter of moments. But the final score from Carroll Stadium is zeros on the board between these two combatants that played each other for the first time. Stay tuned, our post-game conversations come your way next from downtown Indianapolis. Nil-nil draw this evening on MyIndyTV and ESPN+. Plus. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship. Trade your current vehicle and get more. Save thousands with 0.9% financing or payments from $249 a month. Drive with two years of complimentary Honda maintenance. To trade, save, and drive, search your local Honda dealer. For over a century, Indiana has been the destination for sports innovation and the state where champions are crowned. Now, we're entering a new era with Sports Tech HQ, a place that inspires innovation and invests in entrepreneurs who are changing the game, one startup at a time. Welcome to the crossroads of sports and technology. Sports Tech HQ, home of the game changers. I'm a happy-go-lucky guy, but sometimes I get uh, a little stressed because I'm not for sure what's going to happen down the road. I was at the cancer unit, and when I come out from seeing the doctor, I said something about needing some help with all the paperwork. They gave me a name and a phone number. 
her name is Molly. She works over at Community. She tells me, stop worrying. Let me take care of it. She is my angel. Stand by me. Don't buy a pre-owned Honda unless Honda certified it. Drive with confidence knowing your engine, transmission, brakes, and more. Honda certified it. Plus, get a seven-year, 100,000-mile warranty covering your Honda certified pre-owned vehicle. Only at your local Honda dealer. Post-match coverage is underway. Not a goal to be had for either side. This evening was the possession of the Indy 11, the organization of Las Vegas Lights, and both those were on display. An Indy controlled possession, maybe a bit more in half number one than half number two. These chances for the Indy 11 were the best in the final three or four minutes of this match. Just a couple of clean looks, really, for Las Vegas throughout the course of the match. It all adds up to nil-nil. Greg Rakestraw. Brad Hunter with you here on My Indy TV and the Indy 11 Television Network. Overall, your impressions of this home opener for Mark Lowry's team. I enjoyed it. You take a look, and, and we've done this. What have we been, 150, 160 games together? We've watched, and there have been times that you've, you've watched this team play, and you can't figure out what they're doing. You know? And here you can see. You can see there is a purpose. There is a plan. There is methodical movements. And, and ball movements, and you can just start to read the game at a different level. It's a clear positive. This team has given up one goal in three matches. They have not given up a goal. Now in the last 200 plus minutes they have played. That's obvious to see. You concerned at all about the fact this team has one goal in the run of play so far? No, you take a look at the, the defending is so much of this. It's just you make a decision to be better than the guy that's in, in your space. Up front, there's a fluidity, there's a rhythm that needs to happen. And you take a look at these first three matches. You're on slippery turf in Tampa Bay, the first time you've played in anything above 50 degrees, first time you've played on, on grass. Then you go up to Detroit and you've got these hurricane-like winds and, and rain. And, and here, even though it was a, a, a clear night, you still had 20 mile an hour winds. So you haven't had a, a environment that is conducive to pretty rhythm play. You started to see some of it here at the end, but I'm not concerned about that at all. Let's take a look at our match stats. And again, um, shots were kind of minimal for both sides. Uh, Diaz, you know, had, had some things to do. Uh, the goalkeeper for Las Vegas lights, but the shots on target number tells you all need to know. Again, Las Vegas, while they didn't have a, an official shot on target, Botello Faz had the best chance of the match for them and literally just kind of lifted it up and over the bar. So technically that's not a shot on target, but that was the closest they came to a goal. That possession number is in, I've never seen a number like that. No, and, it, and what, what it does is it, it tells you the style that was played out here because Indy did a great job. You take a look at Cam Lindley dropping back in between the center backs and the two wide backs going up and the two forwards from Las Vegas. They were playing 5v2 over about a 30 to 40 yard area. Normally they're playing 5v2 and 10 by 10 and it's tough to get the ball. So that kind of possession and you look at the 20% from Las Vegas, it was all in transition, waiting for that one missed touch, waiting for that one missed pass and then looking to pounce. So again, those are the look at the match stats. That 80-20 possession number, again, just, again, that, that, that's mind-blowing to me. And again, I, I know that Mark kind of referenced that at halftime. I thought, okay, I don't think that number got back to 50-50 in the second half, but to see that at the end of a match is just absolutely crazy. Yeah, when you look at the, the 20% from Las Vegas, they're winning the ball in transition and trying to go quickly. So, that, you know, they're not having long stretches of possession because they're just looking to see if they can't find a seam. All right, there's a guy out here in shorts. Let's get to him now because it's cold out here. Cam Lindley sprinted out of the locker room to come talk to us. Buddy, we're not that important. A brisk walk is, is good enough next time. I know you wanted the full three points, but to wear that uniform in this building and knowing the last time you did it, you were playing it at Lucas Oil. What's it like to get that first home match here out of the way tonight for you? Well, first off, uh, both you guys are extremely important to this club, so of course <laughs> I'm always going to sprint across from you guys. Uh, but yeah, I mean, of course, uh, we wanted the three points, but it's nice to be home and it was awesome to see the fans. Um, obviously, the conditions weren't great, the cold, the wind, but man, the fans were amazing. Um, and I wish we could have delivered three points, but you know, I felt like the performance was good and I felt like um, we should have probably put a few in the back of the net. Uh, you heard me probably spit out that stat about possession being 80-20, and that's not a figure of speech. That's literally the numbers. 
your thoughts on, on, on what you need to keep the ball at your feet throughout the course of the match? Yeah, I mean, that's um, our, our identity. Um, so the numbers are good, but at the end of the day, the, the numbers that matter are nil-nil. Um, and we didn't get the goal that we needed. So, uh, you know, we got a quick turnaround here. We got a big game on Wednesday, so uh, we got to figure out how to score some goals then. So you go back to that possession. You take a look at your role in there, sort of the quarterback sitting in the middle of the park. There are times when you are bouncing in front of the back line to pull the ball off and give some relief. And there's times you're dropping in between the center backs. What are the cues that you look for as far as when you make your decision to do one versus the other? Yeah, so tonight they play with two forwards. So uh, we had Pato and Torres, and they were doing a good job, uh, one pressing, one sitting on me. But there were a few times where they kind of widen out. So when they widen out, that's a time for me to drop in and play as a three. Um, but I'm trying to occupy one of those guys. So then Jesus and Diz tonight, um, they had some space to drive in and uh, make some plays. When you look at creating a dream midfield, who would you have picked besides Quinn, Blake, and Asante to be with you in that diamond? I mean, I guess like Luka Modric, uh, Lionel Messi. <laughs> but, uh, you know, okay, fair point. <laughs> no, in this league, uh, those are the guys I'd pick. Uh, it's, it's a great, you know, great three guys to play with. And we have guys on the bench that can come in and do the same things. But some good pedigree there. And we're only going to grow. We're only going to get better. We're all still learning each other. So it's a long season. Um, and we're still undefeated. How different is the role you are playing here with the Indy 11 than the one that you played last year that got you to second team all league out in Colorado Springs? Yeah, it's a little bit different. Um, I'm not as close to the goal as I was um, in Colorado Springs, but we have so many talented players. So uh, I'm just happy to be out there. Uh, I'm going to do my best uh, every single game, and uh, I'm going to continue to do that. When you look at conceding one goal over the course of three matches, you know, we talk about building through you, but take a look at the job that this back four has done and Edelin goal. Can you speak a little bit about the job that they've been doing? Yeah, I mean, uh, Mark, Mark, Gabe, and I, we work on it all the time, that back four. Uh, little things that maybe, you know, people don't see, getting out, you know, leaving guys offside, stuff like that we work on all the time. So we're a belie believer if we keep zeros um, on that side of the ball, we have Seba Gonzalez, we have the Felbergs that went out there tonight, uh, we have Douglas, guys like that that will come in and score goals. So we're going to get rolling, we're going to score goals, but uh, we got to keep keep shutting it down back there. Cam, go get someplace warm, my friend. Thanks Thank for the time. We'll see you here on Wednesday Thanks, night. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Cam Lindley, again, great to have him back home for a second stint with the Indy 11. We'll track down Yannick Etzel, hopefully talk to the head coach of the Indy 11 and Mark Lowry as well. Continued post-game coverage comes your way next from Carroll Stadium. Nil-nil between the Indy 11 and the Las Vegas Lights this evening here on My Indy TV. Meet Chip. 30 years ago, he started a small business with a big idea. Today, there's a new building, a new fleet of equipment, and a new era of leadership. But we know Chip, and at Indiana Members Credit Union, we know he plans to keep growing, building business with the next generation. IMCU is here to help with secure and simple account management tools and commercial financing to grow business. Today, it's all about Chip. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. When your cat's a meme and your dog is too. And it's hard to know what's fake or true. Just raise a glass with a friend or two. You tell them more, tell them more, tell them more, do. It's a crazy world, so what do you do? You tell them more, tell them more, tell them more, do. Tonight's match is presented by your Central Indiana Honda dealers. Central Indiana is proud to be Honda's home turf too. Search your local Honda dealer today. 
and by Community Health Sports Medicine. Exceptional care, simply delivered. Both and once again, back on the campus of IUPUI, Greg Rakestraw, Brad Hodder, and now we're joined by the man that just for a second Saturday in a row put up a clean sheet for the Indy 11 tonight's nil-nil draw. It is Yannick Etel. Yannick, thank you so much for the time, and obviously you did your job. So did the guys in front of you. Just your thoughts about defensively the work you and your teammates put in this evening. Um, honestly, good job by the team to stay patient and to keep moving the ball. Um, we created a bunch of ch chances, and um, I think towards the end, I... I could have sworn we, we got that, you know, we put put one away and uh, we win this game 1-0. This was your first chance to play at home in front of the Brickyard Battalion. What was that experience like? Um, it was great. The support, uh, the fans, it was loud. Um, they were chanting. It was it was really good atmosphere and um, definitely no excuse there um, for us not to get the points here today. Um, but yeah, so it was a great experience. You're very comfortable with your feet, and your teammates obviously have got confidence in you in that capacity. What is the instruction from the coaching staff on how to involve yourself and when to involve yourself? Um, they, we're playing a system where, where the goalkeeper definitely is involved in creating, creating the way we move up the field. So there is... Um, Coach, coach wants me to be involved in the build-up, in playing around pressure, and it's extremely helpful um, to have that plus one in the back who, who, can, who can help the, the other players play out of pressure. So uh, that is the expectation, and, um, and I think so far it's, it's going really good. So for a keeper to stay sharp, he's got to have a, a keeper that he's training with that is equally solid and able to press him. Uh, so I'd, I'd like you to talk about the relationship between you and Tim Trilk because before the game you guys hugged it was it was a genuine hug of two guys that are fighting for you know the betterment of this club talk about the relationship between you and Tim uh Tim Tim is a great guy um we got along from pretty much the first day that we got in together and uh, we set the standards high uh, in practice and the locker room and just who we are we we're trying to be leaders in this team we're trying to be um the best versions of ourselves and it's extremely helpful when the other goalkeeper does it the exact same way even though we're competitors um in my experience when goalkeepers do that and they get along and they push each other and they get the best out of each other uh it's a great recipe for for friendship you don't have many of these weeks like this till you kind of get to the back half of the season unless hopefully there's a long U.S. Open Cup run. But it's Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday. What does that mean for you in, in your position? Um, to stay locked in. I mean, uh, it's three games in one week is, is, is challenging, uh, but more so for the, game, for the field players, I would say. Sure. Uh, for us, it's not as heavy on the legs, um, but we got to stay locked in. Uh, it's important games coming up. Uh, we want to win every single game, and uh, and we need to stay locked in, well, every stay, single one of us. Stay locked in and go get someplace warm. Thanks for joining us after the game, Yannick. Congratulations on that second straight clean sheet. Thanks for having me, guys. You got it. Yannick Gettel, kind enough to join us again. He has allowed one goal so far in 270-plus minutes as the uh, netminder for the Indy 11. We'll get to Mark Lowry coming up in a matter of moments. But overall, Brad, again, your impressions as to what you've seen from Yannick so far. You just look at the way he speaks right there. That's a guy that you want to play with and play for. So just unbelievable character and presence, and you see it in goal. You see it in him as a person. So Mark Lowry is heading to our broadcast position. Want to make sure we get a chance to uh, catch up with Mark coming up here in a matter of moments. So with that, Mark Lowry has the headsets on. Let's join him now. Coach, how you feeling after this one, a nil-nil draw? I mean, I'm happy with the team. I'm happy with the performance. I mean, I don't think the USL since stats like that before, to be honest. Um, I said to the guys at halftime, it's going to be 1-0 to them or 1-0 to us. I've been in this situation a lot. When you're a good team, teams come with a plan. They get compact. They try and deny you space. It's very difficult to break down. You watch Man City games, and that's what teams do to them. Man City go and win it 1-0. We wanted to win this game 1-0. We're going to get one chance, um, and we're going to score it. But on the other end, we didn't give them a single inch. And that's, that shows maturity. That shows concentration. That shows an intensity from the guys that was superb. I mean, to not give them anything... 
uh, was fantastic. So all in all, I'm super happy. Um, we, another day, we score one of those chances. Seba scores one the first half. We hit the bar in the first half. We had enough chances to win the game. So I thought the creation was good, the combinations were good, and the, just the general control was fantastic. Again, I think you're happy with all 14 guys that, that uh, played for you tonight. But uh, if there was one that stood out to both Brad and I, it was, it was Dee's pay, and again, he's one of the last guys that you kind of bring onto the roster. What have you seen from him so far in his first three games in an Indy 11 uniform? Well, I told him when we saw him, I said, you can be the best center back in the league. You're tall, you're fast, and you're good on the ball. I'm going to teach you how to defend, and I'm going to make you the best center back in the league. And he's bought into that work, and I think what he's seen is potentially the best center back in the league. He's now using his body and his speed. He's been shown how to use it. Before, he was just super aggressive and gave a lot of free kicks. He got a lot of cards. I think he's got one yellow card for us right now. He's, he's defending properly, and he's, he's, he's just a really, really good player, and I've been super proud of the work that he shows since he's been here. Staying with him specifically, but with the team in general, there was a corner kick late in the, the, the match where he has to make a sprint all the way